Hi there, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to do one version of how to digitize a patch in SoArt. So I think that I'm going to do a series of these and then um, make one compilation video that'll be really long, but it'll show you all the different ways. Because I looked up on YouTube how to make an embroidery patch and there's so many different ways that there's not one right way. Um, there's one right way for you, and one right way for me, and one right way for somebody else. And also it depends on the application, and oh, there's so many things that go into it. So um, so what we're going to do in this first one is going to be a filled, just a, a regular filled patch. And this is going to be a very simple design that I'm going to do. You guys take it and run with it and turn it into beautiful things and then bring it to our Sew Art group on Facebook. You can um, find it by looking on Facebook for, and, and the links are underneath the video as well, but you can look up Sew Art Digitizing is the more advanced group. And then um, our personal group is Sew Art Embroidery Digitizing for beginners, because even though I teach this, I still am not that great at it. <laughs> so I feel like I'm still a beginner too. Um, but in the other group, there's Maya and a few other people that are really smart and, and very technical and can explain things much better than me. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into this one. And like I said, it's going to be very basic. We're going to use everything in sew art. We're not going to create anything outside of it. And I want to do an oval. So I'm going to choose the circle here. Okay. And we can change the color of the inside using this, but not the outside, unless I just don't know how to do it yet. And that might very well very well be true but we're going to go ahead and turn it like light blue okay and let's go ahead and click out and then let's go in here to our fill region button it's a little bucket tool and I want to turn the outer edge black just because I want to and I always like to refill anything with so art colors even in so art it just makes me feel like something is getting flooded in. I could be completely off base, but works for me. <laughs> okay, and but we're going to add something in the middle because we want this to be a filled patch. We don't want it to be an empty patch. If you just wanted it to be this and then take it into Sew What Pro and add, um, add your wording or other designs to it, then you're done here with as far as creating. But just for a little bit of interest and to kind of help people who are just beginning with sew art. We're gonna grab the heart and, oops, I'm gonna make it pretty big. There we go. Okay, and I want that to be pink and then I'm gonna go up here to my bucket tool and I wanna turn the whole thing pink. I don't want the inside of this. I want these two to match up with each other. I don't want the inside to also have a satin stitch. I want them to lay flat against each other, kind of like patches do. And there, like I said, there's so many different kind of patches that it's just going to be really fun putting together this series, I think. Okay, so you're done. Double check your size. Make sure it'll fit in your hoop. Mine is 3.9. So I'm going to choose OK. Make sure that I only have four colors, white, black, blue, and pink. Oops, I didn't mean that button. <laughs> yep, four colors. Okay, that's all we want to do. Now for the stitching part, let's go ahead and choose the stitch image button. And we're going to do this all manually. Because we want it to have a satin edging, we have to choose the manual stitches, okay? But luckily it's already set at the fill and the default. And you can change this stuff around and try different um, combinations of of the, the the default stitch out and the angle as well. I have literally never done that, but I encourage you to try and play and share it with us in the groups, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose the blue right away. And then I'm gonna choose the pink. And you wanna think about the order that you want it to go on. You want the last thing to be stitched out to be the last thing you choose. Um, 
because you want this. If we do the blue first and then the purple, the purple will go over the blue and kind of grab the edges of the blue. But if we do the purple first, the blue is going to go up to the edges of of the thing kind of look like it's under it. I hope that that makes sense. Okay, so that was simple. We just needed to choose those two, make sure we did it in order. And then we're gonna choose outline center line. Okay, and we're gonna make sure that it's on a running and a satin. And then we're going to pick 40. And you wanna mess around with these and two or one. Okay, you want them to be very, very close together. I might even go back and put one. Okay, and whenever you choose your seeding spot, let's delete that real quick. When you choose your seed spot, choose a flat spot like this so that whenever it comes back to the other side, it can match up. If it has to try to match up on a corner or on a curve, it's gonna give you a gap, okay? We do not want that. So let's go ahead and choose that again. Okay, and so our, is fantastic but it's satin stitch is very technical it listens to the line and so since you can't have a perfect line in a curve for some reason it you know pixelates and jags the edges well that does that to the satin stitch so if it's really important for you to have your satin stitches being perfect you're going to want to go into sew up pro and um you know move the stitches around and stuff and there's lots of videos on YouTube about that I don't know how to do that <laughs> which is why I'm not going to worry about it too much but I am going to change my length to one on here and try that again okay I think that that'll be just a little bit better but I'm not sure I haven't stitched it out yet we're going to check it out so once we're done with this we can choose file save as it's going to give us the option to save the image and I don't want to, so I'm gonna choose cancel. And then in my documents, I don't want it on my documents, I mean, I want it on my desktop. Okay, so let's save it as, um, uh, I think I might already have patch on here, nope. Oh, I do, I have filled patch, but we're gonna do patch filled, cause you know, I did a little run through first to make sure it was gonna be okay. Okay, so now let's open up Sew It Pro. And hopefully that'll happen pretty quickly. Okay, so Sew It Pro is open. Let's go ahead and open our file that we just created in Sew Art. Okay, patch, filled patch was my, my trial and patch filled is the one we just did together. And there it is. Okay, so since I'm going to be um, making a patch out of this, I'm not going to worry too much about how this satin stitch looks. To me, it looks fine. And, you know, that's just me. <laughs> but you can change the density and um, the pull factor. You can also change the pull compensation right here in a, in so up or in so art, okay? So you can do that in both programs to make that a little bit more fuller. And same with the density, you can change the density as well. And everything looks good here. Doesn't look like, whoa, what happened there? Oh my gosh, I must have accidentally clicked okay. <laughs> Those settings must have been crazy, okay. So <laughs> back to this. All right, so what you're gonna do whenever you do your patch, so this looks good. I'm happy with how this is. Um, and, and I just, I wanna merge something in here real quick, but I wanna go over how this is gonna go. So you're gonna hoop your stabilizer and, um, and a piece of fabric if you want to. Okay, this is totally optional is that extra piece of fabric. A lot of people like it because it gives them um, more uh, more stabilizer it's more it's more stable than than the tearaway stabilizer um so what's going to happen is you're going to hoop your stabilizer and your piece of fabric whatever it is and then you're going to stitch out 
the blue, it's going to stitch out the purple, and then it's going to stitch out your satin stitch. And then if you have a piece of fabric underneath it, you're going to need to cut all the way around it. And um, something I saw somebody do, and I will put a link in the bottom and also show you in the sew out whenever I do the sew out at the end of this, um, it's something called fray check. And you're going to put it around the edge of your thing. It's like a, a very liquidy glue that um, is washable and you'll be able to put it around the edges of your your satin stitch and let it dry before you cut it out and that way if you if it frays your edges if you accidentally snip something it's no big deal all right so that's all going to come later i just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what what's going to happen for this kind of patch all right so here we're going to go ahead and just merge something and this is just for fun if you don't care about this part if you're already good to go you don't have to keep watching it will not hurt my feelings <laughs> But we're going to go ahead and add some lettering. So my passport. And I know Sew Up Pro does so much other amazing things, but I really only use it to merge things <laughs> for now, you know. Okay, so let's see. Oh, wait, we don't want an alphabet. We just want a simple font. Let's do Hello. Oh, sorry, that's my husband. He's home. I'm sorry, I'm I'm recording, Christian. Sorry about all the noise. Okay, and then we're just gonna choose a C. I don't know, for Christian, I guess because he's on my mind. <laughs> and we'll put that there. And that's how you merge designs right there. Click Merge, and you go in and you cho choose your d extra design that you didn't digitize, or maybe you did digitize and you want to join it together on here for, um, you know, for your patch to be cuter and put lettering and stuff on your patch. So let's go ahead. I'm probably going to put a different letter on this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close out the video and move to the stitch out, but I'm going to choose a different letter so that I can use this for somebody. Alrighty, I'll talk to you soon. See you in a minute. Okay, so I have the digitized design uploaded to the machine. I have my machine all ready to go to start with a base of purple. I have changed things up ever since. I digitized it. I want to do things a little bit differently. Okay, so we're going to have four color stops. It's going to be our first one. It's going to be very dense. And then there's going to be a heart. It's going to go over the top of this, but it's going to also be very dense. And then we're going to have our oval that will go around the outside. That will be the satin stitch. And then we're going to have a K on the inside for Kayla. Now I should have probably ordered it where the K went first and the satin stitch last, but it really, really doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go to the hoop now. All right, so here's my hoop and I have my um, sew on style number 806 stitch and tear. That's what this is called. I also have fray check to put around the edges when I'm done. I found this at Joann's, but only because it was um, empty at uh, Walmart. So go ahead and hoop your thing. Grab a piece of some kind of cotton or something that you feel confident ironing. This is just some scrap cotton and it already has um, heat and bond light on the back because I use that for applique, but you don't have to have that. Just use something, you know, nice and, and sturdy like cotton. Okay, and, and I would also say to use or try different materials and stuff like that. Don't just get stuck to one kind of material. Um, try different kind of materials out because different people use different things. And I am not a professional at all. I'm just helping you guys figure out what I figured out. All right, so let's go back number one. Let's go ahead and put this down. 
And because it's going to be such a dense design, I don't really care that it's wrinkled. It's just going to put it all really heavy anyways. Okay, so let's go ahead and start it. Okay, so the first part is stitched out. The second part is going to be the heart in the middle, and I chose a blue to go with it. I just think that this turned out really pretty, the colors that, um, that I picked. I picked blue and purple, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the edge. I think I might just go back to the purple, maybe black, maybe white. I don't know yet. Okay, so I decided to go with a blue satin stitch for the outside of this, just honestly because it's easier, it's already in there, and it will contrast this purple here and kind of blend in with this blue and this white whenever I have to cut it out. So it, hopefully it'll look good. Um, and then we'll put the K on at the very end in white. I think that that one should definitely be a different color. But since we've already got this in there, let's just go ahead and go with the blue. Okay, so it is all done. Get it? K. <laughs> I know I say okay a lot, and that's just funny that I chose a K for that. K, it's all done. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut. Well, first, I'm going to just pop this right out of the cutaway and then I'm going to cut very closely no I'm not I'm not even going to do that yet I'm going ahead and go over to the iron and I'm going to put my uh, heat and bond ultra on the back iron that on first and then cut around everything because the heat and bond will glue this satin stitch in the back really nicely so I don't have to overdo it with the braid check at the end okay so I'm just going to trim off all of this stuff in the back anything in the front and I'll meet you guys over at the ironing board all right so everything is trimmed here is my patch okay and here is the heat and bond ultra hold it's this one in the red package, okay? If you, It's a no sew, so do not sew this on. If you want a patch to sew on, um, use the um, Heat and Bond Light in the purple package. This is no sewing. If you want to sew it on to whatever you're trying to get it on to, go ahead and hand sew it, okay? Um, but don't put your, your sweet sewing machine through that. Okay, so we're just gonna flip over the K on our piece of parchment make sure that it's on parchment because all this stuff is glue and stuff and it gets all over everything so we're going to parchment underneath and then we're going to fold it in half and i have it doubled because i used it for the last patch and some of the glue got on the inside so all right so we'll take our iron and just actually sorry let the iron go onto your ironing board just a little bit first let it catch that most heat if that makes sense and then we're just gonna get it on there nice and then hold it for eight seconds We're just going to take it out of our sandwich. I don't know if you could see, but some of the glue got on that, and some of the glue is stuck to this. We're going to take this off. We're going to let it dry a little bit, and then we're going to cut around. Okay? So we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start cutting it now. Once I'm done cutting it, 
I'm going to take the backing off. Well, I guess we can take the backing off now. We don't have to be fancy. And there you go. That's your iron on patch material. Okay? So it might be really sticky in the middle whenever you iron it on, and it might iron on really good, but the edges might come undone later. Just go ahead and grab some fabric glue or patch glue and um, some fabric glue or patch glue and just touch up around the edges. I'm glad I went with glue. I'll still put the, the fray stuff around the top of it. But the bottom is nice and glued. See that? So at least I'll only come undone from one direction until I put fray check on. Okay, and I don't know if you can tell, but in some places they pulled away from each other because it's so dense. So I might have wanted to use a different, a thicker stabilizer or double up my tear away on this one because it's so dense but really I think it turned out pretty awesome and I hope Kayla's gonna love it so there's the back again and there's the front all right I hope this was helpful talk to you guys later bye